Remember Joan of Arcadia? All right, it's a great show. It was on a couple years ago. They canceled it. It was really stupid because it was a great show. Um, and uh, if you remember what Joan was about, it's about this high school girl named Joan, okay, of Ark Adia. All right, and she gets on the bus one day, and there's a really cute guy on the bus, and they kind of start doing the eye thing, you know, they kind of start looking at each other, and it's, you know, you know what, you know what I'm talking about. And, uh, and, uh, and they get off the bus, you know, and they start talking. And, uh, and then the guy says, um, you know, I'm God. Which is not really what you expect to hear from a cute guy on a bus. And, uh, and she goes to ask her friends about it, and her friends say, all guys say that. And she goes, no, 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 this guy really thinks he's God. Okay. And, uh, and she's got she's to find out, whether because he's got some pretty good evidence. I'm going to use the word evidence a lot tonight. Science is about evidence. Science is, isn't about proof. We get confused sometimes and think that it's about proof. It's about evidence. This guy on the bus has got some interesting evidence in support of his thesis that he's God. And so she's got to figure, not, figure out you know, whether or not he's actually God. So she, she's got to go talk to her brother Luke. She doesn't like Luke very much. He's younger. He's uh, smart, where she doesn't think she's smart. Turns out she's pretty smart, but she didn't know she's smart. Luke is clearly an IB kid. You'll find out in a while. He uses great big words to answer, answer little questions, you know, simple questions. And, uh, and so they have, this, uh, they have this conversation. Joan says to her brother, so you're a science geek. Now, see, Joan has a big question, and she wants to find out what the answer is. You know, could it be that this guy is really, you know, like God? So she goes to her brother. She doesn't go to her father or mother, you know, which we really ought to do with the great important questions of life, but we'd never seem to do that. Uh, She could go to her friends. She could go to a teacher, a school counselor. She doesn't. She could go to a priest or a rabbi or an imam or a pastor, you know, a religious guy. But, of course, they work for God. They just say, sure, I believe in God. You know, he signs my paychecks. You know, of course God exists. So she's not going to go there. But she goes to Luke. She doesn't like Luke very much. They don't have a great relationship. But she goes to Luke and asks, and then she, then she sets the parameters of the discussion right there at the beginning. So you're a science geek. So what she's saying is, I'm here to talk about science. That's what I want to know about. And then, you know, he says, because he's an IB kid, he says, no, I prefer man of science. And, you know, and then she says, okay. She says, so do you believe in God? Now, what answer is she expecting him to give her? No. No. Why? Because science has demonstrated, in fact, according to sort of the popular what's going on in the press, science has proven that God doesn't exist. But that's not what Luke says. Luke says, sure. All right. She's like, all right, what's the story? Then he does something really useful for me and for you is that he goes through all of the science or a lot of the science that we're going to talk about tonight and tomorrow night. He says, if you believe in... The theory of relativity, which I do, we're going to talk about that first. If you believe in the laws of thermodynamics, which I do, we're going to talk about that last. If you believe that light is conscious as it appears to be, we're going to talk about that second. Then sure, how can you argue? Now, if I were Joan, I would have argued. I would have said, hello, you know, I really need to know why all of this stuff, you know, makes you think that, you know, you know, we need to do some explanation. I need, I need some more details. But, you know, she skips right over all that. You know, she says, okay, all right, all right. Do you think he could be, like, walking around in the world? You know, like a person? Yeah. Well, you know, energy can manifest itself in any form. So the answer is, and we're going we're to talk about that. So the answer is, yeah, it's possible. So what they did for us is they went through all of the science, or actually just a lot of the science that we're going to talk about, that sort of leads to and creates a debate that's going on in the popular press. Now, you don't read about this very much, because there's a whole other debate going on that we're not going to talk about. But there's another one that's kind of percolating along underneath the surface that nobody hears about much. Uh, They had a debate uh, not too long on Time magazine. Uh, between, uh, and, and it sort of illustrates it, between evolutionary biologist, actually the principal voice for evolutionary theory on the planet, the principal apologist for evolution, Richard Dawkins out of Oxford. And he had kind of a discussion, a debate with Francis Collins, who's the head of the Human Genome Project, the decoded DNA. He's probably going to win the Nobel Prize one of these days. And he is a man of faith, a great man of faith. So you got a tremendous atheist. Richard Dawkins just wrote a book called The God Delusion, saying that God is a delusion and religion is fraudulent and we ought to just dump religion and get rid of the whole God concept altogether. And they sat him down with Francis Collins, who teaches Sunday school, and decoded the human genome, was head of the team that decoded the human genome. Two of the greatest biologists on the planet talking about it. So the debate is there, but it's happening at a level that we're not exposed to. 
Uh, it's all over the press. Newsweek, uh, Science Finds God, not something you'd expect to see. Time Magazine, again, what does science tell us about God? Uh, Beyond Physics from the Scientific American website, renowned scientists contemplate the evidence, not the proof, again, but the evidence for God as it might be found in physics, which is what we're going to be talking about. Saturday Evening Post, again, Science Finds God. Science Magazine, Science and God, a warming trend. Um, this is uh, actually from our local paper. Debate finds a link between faith and physics. Science comes closer to God. It's just all over the place. Wired Magazine, my favorite magazine. It's not a magazine about getting stoned in the parking lot at lunchtime. Great magazine. Science gets religion in Wired Magazine. MotherJones.com, why science and religion collide or why Einstein wasn't an atheist. Scientists talk about why they believe in God. Time Magazine, again, the God Gene, which was a couple of years ago in October. That was the cover. This is the inside. Does our DNA compel us to seek a higher power? Believe it or not, some scientists say yes. IB World Magazine. <laughs> Not the place you would expect to find it. And yet here was a great article written by a guy named Paul Davies, who's a quantum gravity specialist. He was formerly at McGuire University. I think he's just moved up to some place in New Mexico, maybe the Santa Fe Institute. Uh, he talks about complexity theory and chaos theory and a lot of these things. Um, and, uh, and Paul Davies' speech to IB graduates in South Australia back in 1997 uh, was all about God and Einstein. God and physics to IB graduates. So it's even in your world, um, IB World Magazine. And this is an article from, uh, from, taken from the New York Times, written by James Gleick, who's a, 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 a chaotician, a chaos theorist. And uh, it's a fascinating article. We're just going to read parts of it. As scientists attain a higher level of knowledge, they begin to tackle religious questions. Um, let's read a couple of bits here. Um, as scientists, as science moved towards its grand unified theory and other grails, some of its practitioners have been seeing an argument for God in the esoterica of high energy physics of all places. They feel that somewhere in these cosmological coincidences and the accumulating perfection of mathematics lies the evidence of design that cannot be explained away. Perhaps they think science is finally reaching a point, a level of knowledge that will confirm God instead of rendering him superfluous. And then he takes a quote from a, a novel by John Updike. And this is what Updike writes. The most miraculous thing is happening. The physicists are getting down to the nitty gritty. They've really just about pared things down to the ultimate details. And the last thing they ever expected to happen is happening. God is showing through. That's the debate.